we offer customized, flexible nutritional counseling designed specifically for you. We work with diverse clientele, all different ages, different needs, and goals. Whether you are looking for fat loss, muscle gain, body composition shifts, improved health, performance, and endurance, we're here to help. All right, Anabolic Academy with Danny Broadhurst and Uncle John. It's just the two of us today. That's all right. We got five questions and we're going to knock them out. What's doing, Danny? What's going on? It's a little bit of a like a, a light time in bodybuilding. Like I know the Arnold Brazil's coming up, but like yeah. nobody's doing it except for Brazilian bodybuilders that nobody knows. I don't think Rafael Brandau was doing it. Yeah. And that's a, that's a pro qualifier, too. I think the amateur show. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I think all of those Arnold amateurs are so. I, maybe I know. we'll get a new pro that's good. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know. All right, so I got five questions. All right, so the first question is: I see a lot of people doing squats in the gym, but I see two specific types. One is an Olympic squat, and the other is a powerlifting squat. What are the pros and cons for doing both? But for, for you know, trying you mean, like wearing Olympic shoes? No, no, no. Olympic squat is like your 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 basic squat where you kind of like go all the way down and it hits a lot of your quads. And a powerlifting squat is you know when your feet are very spread apart and you okay. squat down deep into the pocket, if you will. Yeah, I mean, even with with the Olympic shoes, like you're going to get more quad activation. So, um, like elevating your heels like that it's going to mm. uh, cause you to get more you know quad activation so i would say that <clears throat> with the um olympic squat you're probably going to get a little bit more quad and with the powerlifting squat it's going to be adductors you're going to get glutes you're going to get uh kind of more full leg yeah i always did more of a powerlifting squat it was always because of um poor range of motion and the Olympic squad, which is never very comfortable for me. I can never get yeah. it right. And and then my brother-in-law is a powerlifter, and he uh, showed me how to do it properly, the powerlifting squat. And ever since then, it was uh, much better. Sorry, what was that? That's okay. No, my brother-in-law taught me how to do a powerlifting squat. I've, I've done it ever since, and it was, mu it was always much better. And, but you're right. It hits more the adductors, the glutes, the hamstrings. I mean, it yeah. hits some quads too, but I never had – I never really had a problem with quads. I always had pretty relatively big quads, but yeah, a lot of that has to do with ankle mobility too. I mean, if you have good ankle mobility, you can even put your feet completely together when you know do the cannonball squats, and that's mm. going to get more quad. Um, I I like doing those honestly, but now now I don't know how my ankle mobility is going to be. You know, so. that's a good. That's actually pretty good. That might be one of the reasons why um, I can't do it. I would if I had to do a squat where I wanted to put the emphasis more on my quads, I would do a box squat on the Smith machine. Mm. That would usually uh, be more emphasis on the, on the quad for me anyway, specifically. The box squat? Huh. Yeah. Box squat. Yeah. I don't know. What do box I, do? Squat? What do I do? on a box? Yeah. Like, you know, oh. like you wouldn't necessarily use a box. It could be a, anything, but you would and just you sit, sit down. Yeah. You sit down and, oh. and come back up. Uh, mm -hmm. Johnny Jackson used to do them all the time because of mm -hmm. uh, trying to, that's where I actually got it from to try to uh, grow his quads. Yeah, I would think that would. Well, maybe that's why John Jackson never had big quads. <laughs> like, a, like the best, uh, the best, the best way to do it. Uh, really, you never heard of a you never heard of a box. No, of course, before? but but that's yeah. more for power. I mean, like that that's like what you know NFL players and you know uh, sports players like do for. Um. Uh, you know, they do that for to, to drive, get, yeah, yeah, for power, you know, but uh, like that completely takes out the time under tension aspect of the squat. Good point, yeah, you're very, you're very smart, Danny, very good at this stuff. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're gonna check that one off. The second one, and this is really more of a it's a it's a question that we've covered before, but more and more people are asking about it. Mm -hmm. What is Ozempic and how is it used for fat burning? Um, it's semaglutide. 
Um, basically, it makes food taste bad. That's all it does. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I suppose it gives you a full yeah. feeling, though, doesn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, and it can even make give you an upset stomach. Yeah, if you take too much, it can be can cause nausea, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to start like at a real low, low dose and kind of work your way up. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it gives you kind of like a metallic taste in your mouth, and and it makes whatever you're eating like not taste good. So basically, you just don't want to eat. Yeah, and, and I've seen I've seen some um, information that that says that um, a lot of the people who take it the the weight they're losing is like bone mass and and muscle tissue and Whoa. as much fat yeah oh yeah that that sucks yeah. i don't know man i i because i un, i understand people want to lose weight and they want to diet and so on and so forth but i don't want my food to taste bad when i do eat i want to enjoy the food yeah i mean yeah i don't i don't think i mean it's something that uh, necessarily any bodybuilders would use Right, uh, right, but right. more for your your average, you know, person. I, I know the the. I think the Kardashians made that that uh, big thing because uh, they would take. Figures uh, follow the Chloe all Kardashian. This. She lost a bunch of weight, and I guess she said that was why. So that's why everyone wants it now. Did you? But, when you grew up, did you grow up on a block with a lot of a lot of people? No, no, not at all. Well, uh, when I used to when I grew up. In Brooklyn, there was always there was always that family mm-hmm. on the block that your parents told you to stay away from because they're crazy, and that those were the Kardashians. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember there was a girl that lived across the street from me, and yeah. she really liked my brother. She really loved mm-hmm. my brother. My mother would say, "You stay away from that family. They're fucking crazy." <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't have one of those, but yeah, that's definitely the Kardashians. Oh, there's no question. All right, question number four. Here we go. What are the best ways to build triceps? And this guy put close grip bench and skull crushes versus cable movements. So I think he means more of like the power lifting, the power movements like close grip bench and skull crushes or cable movements. What would build triceps better? Um, I mean, really to get the biggest triceps, you want to work the long head, you know, the most. Um, so, I mean, I, I really like skull crushers, honestly. I think mm-hmm. that's, one of the best tricep exercises you could possibly do and dips. I mean, dips, you're going to get a little more yell and, and chest depending on how you do them. But um, I think for me, I, I just like to get on the bench press and, and do old fashioned skull crushers with the barbell. I think that's yeah. just a great exercise. Yeah. Yeah. I use the easy bell curl and I usually go behind my head a little bit. I don't really go. Right. Yeah, exactly. I do the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because... And, you know, keep the tension on. So if you're, uh, you kind of bring it up uh, straight, like you said, I leave it behind my head the entire time. Ah, uh, okay. okay. So instead of coming straight out, because then you take the tension off your triceps. So because there's another school of thought that cables are very good for building triceps. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I like cables because you can really feel the triceps, right, you know, right. you feel the biceps more. Um, I feel like you can feel more than, than, um, you know, uh, free weights. But in my opinion, uh, I think for, specifically for triceps, I, th- I think barbell skull crushers it would be probably my favorite. If I could only do one or dips. Yeah. It would be yeah. one of those two. I try to do a combination of it all. Yeah, I um, do too. You know, so you're not kind of really missing out on. But I do skull crushes. I do. I use the dip machine. I like the one where you sit down and you add the weight in the front. Oh, that's a great one. Those yeah. are good. That's a good machine. And I just out of it. And, and sure. I've actually learned some cable movements from the late great John Meadows. Oh yeah, yeah. And he had yeah. some really good tricep uh, workouts <clears throat> from the cable machines, and uh, they I still use it to this day, man. It's really good. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's see. Number five. This is actually a really good question. I even want to know this. Exactly how toxic are oral steroids? And this <clears> guy <throat> wrote specifically Anadrol and Dbol. Well, I've I've mentioned this a, a bunch of times on here. Um, you know, the recommended dose um, for prescription Anadrol is five milligrams per kilo of body weight. Mm. So, um, 
I don't actually, you know, that would be like from someone like me, that would be around 600 milligrams a day. Wow. Um, so I can't imagine that it's that toxic. That being said, I think you, you probably want to just limit the amount of time you're taking it, mm. you know, not take it. You know, I would say eight weeks maximum for something like Anadrol and Dianabol. Right. Um, I was I was always under the impression that 150, mil, 150 milligram Anadrol or Dianabol is, is as toxic as one drink, like one martini, that kind of thing. That that was um kind of the rule of thumb, if you will. I don't know how true it is, but that was always kind of like the rule of thumb. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> the liver can take a beating. I mean, it does. Yeah, exactly. People's, people's livers can take a serious beating and, and you can have down to like 5% liver function and your liver can still heal itself and repair. So, um, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think you have to worry that much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kidneys would be the blood pressure getting high from, from the Dianabol or the Anadrol, you know, all the water retention from Dianabol, creating high blood pressure and then that mm-hmm. having an effect in your kidneys that would be what i would worry about um liver i mean liver enzymes alt and ast those can those could be in the you know two three four hundreds um you know and you're not having serious damage i think for for people who have serious liver da- liver damage like hepatitis c um their numbers are in the thousands oh wow markers Okay, yeah. So, okay. um, I've seen, you know, people in contest prep come, come finish a contest. Their numbers will be like 200, 300, mm-hmm. you know, and they freak out. And then, uh, you know, a couple of weeks of N-acetylcysteine, uh, you know, and, um, you know, whatever, you know, a couple of liver supplements like that N-acetylcysteine, what else, um, they milk thistle and, uh, yeah, it, it'll go back to normal within a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually, um, I actually, that happened to me. I went to the emergency room a few years back. I had kidney stones. Oh, and, God. and um, you know, it was painful and they took my blood and the emergency room doctor comes in and she shuts the, sh- the shades or whatever, not the shades, but the blinds, the drapes, sorry. And she says, uh, do you use any uh, bodybuilding supplements? <laughs> and I said, I said, no, why? Well, no, of course yeah, not. She, of course that. She goes, well, because your liver enzymes are, are relatively high. So, so I, I told her no, and I panicked, and then I came home and called my doctor, and he goes, he goes, all right, well, you know, come off of them, and in two weeks come back, and we'll do your blood work over again. Yep. Did that? Went back. He goes, yep, everything's back to normal. <laughs> yep. Exactly. How high were they? Do you remember? I don't remember. This was. Yeah. They they, they go back to normal quick, and and yeah. uh, you know another thing about that is uh, working out and training can have an impact on your liver enzymes because. Um, I, the enzymes are, are released when tissue is broken down and mm. muscle tissue releases the same enzymes when it's broken down. So to really get a, a completely accurate assessment of those enzymes, you would have to stop training for, I think, five days to a week. Really? Yeah. And that's similar to your creatinine level as well, right? That, that goes up when you're training and you have a lot of muscle mass. Correct. Yeah. Why is that? Um. Uh, I mean, for the creatinine, yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm not quite sure, honestly. Yeah, it's all right. uh, but I know that um, the number that that really matters for your uh, for your kidneys is your glomular filtration rate, um, not your creatinine, and and the glomular filtration rate is a, um, basically they take your BUN and your creatinine, and they do mathematical equation, and that's how they mm. gather your filtration rate. Um, so your creatinine can be high, but if your bun is matching that, then you can have a solid GFR and your kidneys are filtering fine. Ah, okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. That's uh, very informative, Danny. Very informative. Since we're on the toxic. Come uh the toxic orals. Let's switch to toxic in general in injections. Jesus, I can't talk. Toxic mm-hmm. injections. Everybody's under the impression that trend is is extremely toxic and so on and so forth. How how toxic is trend? And I've heard of guys, I mean, there was that 
uh, I think it was, I believe, on desktop bodybuilding with Nathan Diaz. He loves trying. He stays on it all year round. And everybody was like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's pretty toxic. Um, yeah. As toxic as orals or more so, do you think? Or around the same? Um, well, it depends on the oral. And, and I, w- I would say around the same. And the same. So it's really... Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the same thing, short period of time, then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. I, I wouldn't, I know some people like to take trend, like, like you said, year round, but uh, I, I can't stand this stuff. It makes me feel like not myself. And really, uh, no, I, I can't stand it. Yeah. I can't stand it. So I, I try to really limit the amount of time I'm taking it. Um, I, I usually like the, the anate one better, trend anate only because I don't like using fast acting stuff, only because I just don't want to pin myself every other day. It's a pain in the ass. But I've always gotten great results. And, and the worst thing that ever really happened to me on trend was just the, the night sweats, really. Yeah. I never really, yeah. really got that bad as far as my attitude or temper or anything like that. Really? Not, not, yeah. Oh. You know what you know what really got me um was halitestin. That really. Yeah. And again, that, I, I've that's only kind of the same tempo wise. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? No, I get it gives the same kind of effects, like with your temper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, um, and it was toward the end of a, a prep, the last show I did, and I was using halitestin. Actually, I was using halitestin, Masteron, and Trend. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that prep was really bad, but I, I specifically felt it with the halitestin when I kicked that in. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, hello tested would you even even want to take like a less amount of time than your anadrol or your dianabol, maybe four weeks maximum. Right. The halo testing, but um yeah, d- just limit the amount of time you're taking the those and, and I think it shouldn't you shouldn't have problems at all. Yeah. But year round, you're you're I think you're asking for trouble. Yeah, it's it's the abuse of the drug that's when it's when it's a problem. When it's limited and you use it. Like I said, I think I told you about the analogy of steroids that I've actually heard from a woman one time, and she said it's supposed to be like makeup just a little bit to make you look better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I've never heard that. Yeah, that's a good Yeah, one. it was a, a woman bodybuilder named Cassie, and uh, she mm-hmm. never turned pro. I don't think she turned pro, but we were friendly uh, when I was younger, and that's what she told me. She goes, just a little bit. She goes, you ever see a woman that may just wears too much makeup and it looks horrible? She goes, I said, yeah. She goes, that's how, that's what steroids are, just a little bit to highlight. But for your health. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was, I was yeah. like, that's pretty good. No, no. So now, yeah. I, since we only had five questions, I got to pick your brain a little bit. We got MD Muscle Talk coming up on Wednesday, and I have no idea what topic I'm going to bring up. What do you think? I was thinking of like maybe – top five best bodybuilders of all time. We could discuss the top five or top 10. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because it's a little bit too early to talk about the New York Pro. Nobody's yeah. really talking about the Arnold Brazil because nobody's in it. Sergio's supposed to do it, but if he doesn't get his accent stuff squared away, he's not going to be able to do it. And he yeah. looks good. He does look good. You know? No, he looks great. Yeah, I he looks good. Yeah, he really does. So, And it would be such an easy win for him. I mean, there's nobody going there. But any other ideas besides the top five or top ten bodybuilders of all time? Um, no, not that I can think of. You know, if you can think of anything, you know, let me know because we might have uh, we might have a, a Jose Raymond on. It's possible that yeah. Why don't well, yeah? Why don't you put out a um like an Instagram? Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. See, it's a yeah. good thing you're my friend, man. You always think of this shit. <laughs> That's a really good one. All right, I'm definitely. Yeah, I'll put out one too. See what. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we should have a good time, and I, you know. And, and if Jose and did you ever read the comments under the MD? Like some people, no, no. some people love our show, and yeah. some people absolutely despise us. Like <laughs> you'll have one comment that'll say, "This is the worst bodybuilding show I've ever watched." <laughs> there is it's not informative. <laughs> This is terrible. And then no the way. Ne- I swear to God. And then the next one right after that is great show. Fellas loved it. Good talk. <laughs> Can't wait till next, next episode. Like, and I'm just like, well, I don't know. <laughs> That's great. I, yeah, I, yeah. Why? I don't know. I, I don't, <laughs> you know what it is? I think, I think, I think MD pulls a real hardcore body bodybuilding fan, like mm-hmm. to the point where they only want to hear about bodybuilding. Like they don't want to hear about nonsense, right? But at the same time, like because when you watch the other shows, like 
you know, Fouad's channel or RX Muscle. Right. They kind of have the combination of like yeah, humor yeah. and and talk yeah. about you know talk about themselves and their pers- personal life too and. Yeah, you know, like the the plumbo's got the rat, pack, the, not the rat pack, the whack yeah, pack, whack pack, yeah, the whack <laughs> yeah. pack, and yeah. you know, and uh, you know, of course, so, from Howard Stern, yeah, and then Fuad yeah. has you know Guy Cisnino and uh, what's the Ian, who they're always, they're always you know yelling at each other and flipping out over nonsense and blah blah blah, blah. so it's entertaining, but I I guess because we're the only show on MD that does that, yeah, everything else on MD is really straightforward interviews or. Uh, breakdowns yeah. and so on so coverage blah 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 so we're the only show that really does that but listen man so far so good so it's working yeah. that's my formula I ain't changing anytime soon that's it yeah absolutely it's All right, fun Dan. Oh, yeah. definitely it really is I mean we have a blast what was the last one we did oh the dog food one. Oh, the dog food yeah yeah that was pretty good yeah. alright Danny I'm gonna let you go and uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. It is my wife's birthday, so now we got to go downstairs and have cake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell her I said happy birthday. I will. Thank you very much, brother. And I will see I'll you on May. I'll see you on Wednesday, and you'll be here, what'd you say? In May. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I got to start looking for a, uh, what do you call it? A studio to rent, because the next day I want to do the podcast. But I don't think I'm going to do it for MD. I think I'm going to save that one for my channel. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. All right, Danny. I appreciate right. it, brother. I'll talk yeah, to you soon. Uh, yeah. Later. Absolutely.